Today I want to discuss some tips for preventing feed issues in uh, M1A and M14 type rifles. And the first tip is to always buy quality magazines. In my opinion, quality magazines are only USGI issue type magazines. Frankly, none of the aftermarket magazines that are out there just work that well. They usually end up causing feed issues right off the bat. Uh, usually if they don't right off the bat, they start causing them within 100 rounds. Best tip, just buy USGI magazines. If you can't get original GI magazines like this type here, and these are getting harder and harder to find, the best source for them now is a company called uh, Checkmate Industries. They're the current producer of USGI mags. And uh, their magazines are easy to identify. <coughs> I don't know, hopefully you can see that. They're marked with a, a CMI on the back. And they have a logo down here on the base, Checkmate. These are the best magazines going right now. They're very, very decently priced. So if you can't get the USGI magazines from way, way back, this is the next best route to go. Next issue is uh, if you're having feed related issues, 99% of the time it's going to be the magazine. And of that 99% of the time, it's going to be a bad magazine spring. Your magazine spring is just starting to wear out. Uh, another issue that you'll have is getting junk and uh, dirt and rust and stuff inside the magazine, which is causing uh, the follower and the spring to bind up inside the magazine box. I don't recommend that you oil or lubricate the inside of a magazine. Leave it dry because all it does is attract dirt and dust in there. It doesn't help anything. It doesn't improve the functioning of the magazine. Clean them, leave them dry. Good quality springs. A uh, simple way to test your spring is to have some new springs available. This one here is a, an actual USGI spring. This one here is from Wolf Gun, Manu Gun Spring, which is a WOLFF. And it's a plus five increased power spring. Uh, USGI springs are 8 coil. Uh, there are some magazine springs out there that are 10 coil. They were designed to be used in AR-10 rifles that are uh, adapted to use M14 magazines. I don't recommend you use the 10 coil springs in these. Uh, if you're going to shoot an M1A or an M14, go ahead and use the uh, 8 coil springs. Here I have a, a magazine spring that's been under compression. It's been used pretty heavily. And you can notice between the Wolf and the USGI, this is growing quite a bit shorter in length. That's a good indicator that it's time to replace your magazine spring. Pretty easy to do. Simply just, there's a little hole right here, and sort of punch in there, pull up, pull the base plate out this way. Magazine spring will come up under tension, so you want to make sure that you got your hand over it. Take the spring and the follower out. Look at the way that the spring's attached to the uh, follower. And then you can just pull those. The old magazine spring will pull right off. Sometimes you have to pry these off to get them off. And because they're hooked in there pretty good. Let's see if I can get that off of there without prying it. I'm going to have to pry it. And I don't have a screwdriver right here handy. But pop that spring off. Pop the other spring on. Generally, if you set the spring in the direction that the other spring is, you can go ahead and pop the other spring on, reassemble everything, good to go. That's that's pretty easy, pretty easy tip. I get a lot of guys complaining that magazines aren't fitting up into the rifle properly. They're sticking, they're hanging up. They're very hard to get into the gun. They're very hard to get out of the gun. Uh, there's some manufacturers out there now of, of current production M1A type rifles that are using uh, investment cast trigger housings. I think a great portion of the problem with sticking magazines is due to the fact of these investment cast trigger housings. I recommend just replacing the trigger housing with a USGI model. This is a USGI and uh, that'll, uh, that'll solve about 99% of the problems you have with magazine sticking. Another problem with magazine sticking is the operating rod spring guide. This little tab up here actually catches on the magazine, holds it in place. Sometimes these get beat up, tore up, bent, and nicked up, and they'll start hanging on the magazine, make it harder to get, a, get the magazine out of the gun. 
just replace that guide. These things can still be found for about four dollars a piece. Real easy replacement. Another uh, another complaint that I get is uh, the rifle's not locking back on an empty magazine. The bolt's not locking back on an empty magazine. And most of the time, the problem can be attributed to the bolt stops or the operating rod spring. That's usually the culprit when the when the gun stops locking open. Uh, again, uh, some manufacturers are using investment cast bolt stops in the rifles. This one here is investment cast. This one here is USGI. If you're having the problem of the, the rifle just won't lock open on an empty magazine consistently when you're firing it, first thing I'd do is go ahead and, and check the bolt stop, see if it's a cast version. It's easy to tell because I don't know again if you can see this, but on the end it'll have a mold line down here. Uh, USGI are smooth, they're forged steel parts and they're they're smooth and uniform all the way around. Replace the bolt stop as a first and also replace the operating rod spring. When an operating rod spring starts to wear out what happens is the bolt starts recoiling more towards the rear of the gun uh, they start bumping off the back end of the receiver. It's not hard enough to break the receiver, it's not anything you gotta worry about there but what does happen is when it bounces off the back of the receiver it tends to jar the bolt stop loose and then the bolt will override the magazine before that follower has actually come up to lock in place and it, it just won't lock open. So those are a few real quick tips on trying to prevent feed issues in your rifle. This will cover about again about 99 percent of the feed issues that I've seen are attributed to these little causes right here. Hopefully this information will help and get your rifle shooting 100 percent. Thank you for watching.